on this subject, such as Chaucer, Tennyson, or Shakespeare. But permit me to remind you that Shakespeare wrote other plays besides Romeo and Juliet. I know it's springtime, but please celebrate it outside the classroom. See that you have noticed this carefully. Class is dismissed. Had your daily dose of ancient and modern English? And how? I missed you, Phil. Where were you? Oh, the coach needed me for baseball practice. He got me permission to cut the class. You're lucky. We girls never get a break like that. The only way we can cut class is to play sick. Well, you don't have it so tough. Got any homework tonight? Plenty. I'm three days overdue on my history notebook now. That's your fault. Well, I hadn't been rushing you so much lately. I gave you last night off, didn't I? And a lucky thing for me, too. I caught up on some of my last sleep. What did you do? Oh, I had some unfinished business to attend to. Peggy Stewart, I suppose. No, oh, no, women. Just to work out in the gym. Ha! Bob always pulls that one, too, when he wants to get out nice. Well, it wouldn't do that brother of yours any harm if he did show up at the gym once in a while. The fellows all think he's high hat. They don't know him as I do. Oh, I guess the kid's all right. Well, he hangs out with a different crowd. Is your brother wise that I'm rushing you? He's not interested in my affairs. Which way are you going? Your way. What do you think? Well, how's about it? Is that heavy date on for tonight? Oh, Phil, I'd love to. Oh, it's but... going to be a swell party. You know Peggy's folks always give you a grand feed. But I don't like Peggy Stewart. Oh, she's good for a lot of laughs. I think backward about that gal. Oh, I know you like her all right. All the boys do, I guess. But Peggy still... Well, my mother said I shouldn't go to her parties anymore. Anyway, I've got some studying to do. Oh, you can catch up on that later, Beth. But I promised Dad I wouldn't go out anymore this week. Why not? He's worried about me losing sleep. Sleep. My people harp on that, too. There's time enough to sleep when you're all washed up and can't do anything else. You better change your mind and come along to that party. Honest, Phil, I can. All right, if that's the way you feel. Don't be sore. Will you call me up tonight? I don't know if I'll have a chance. I'm all set to go. Now I've got to find somebody else. But, Phil, you know very well... So long. Get to bed early and you'll grow up to be a nice big girl. No, sorry. Excuse me, please. <laughs> meeting over yet? No, indeed, they still at it. I just served them some tea. Have you everything for dinner? Mm-hmm. Kind of had to guess at it, though. Your mother's been so busy with this meeting, she can't talk to me today. Oh, did you press Dad's necktie? I heard him tell Mother he didn't have a decent one to wear. She never said a word to me about it. I'll get them. And uh, the pipes was busted in the cellar again. I told your Mother 20 times, but she just keeps putting me off. All right, Sarah, I'll call the plumber. Yes, ma'am. And so I propose that we pledge ourselves to the betterment of conditions in the homes of our poor. It isn't so much charity they need as it is guidance and advice. And it is our duty to teach these poor, ignorant wives and mothers the proper management of their homes. Oh, Hello, Dad. Hello, dear. How are you? 
Well, what's going on in there? The Parents Educational Club meets here today. Oh, that outfit. I've got to change and go right downtown again. You told your mother to cut it short, will you? I wouldn't dare disturb her now. She'll be glad to get rid of them when she knows what's on for tonight. Ed Travers, the Bayer Brandt brothers, just got to town. And we're going to take him out to dinner and then a musical show at the Grand. Oh, Dad, can I go with you, too? I have my new evening gown. No, dear. It's not your sort of a party. But, Dad, you promised me I could see that show. I know, but this is business. Well, look, I have an invitation to go to a dance. If you won't take me with you, why can't I accept it? Now, not tonight, Beth. I told you that... But Rob has a date, too. I'll be here all alone, Dad. You do your lessons and go to bed early. It'll be good for you. As soon as that jamboree is over, you tell your mother that she'd better start dressing. You know how long that takes. Hello. Andrew's resident. Yes, yeah, sir. This is the maid speaking. Just a minute. I'll find out. It's for you, Miss Beth, honey. Who is it? Some boy. What you pulling such a long face for, honey child? Nothing. Hello? Hello, Beth. This is Mrs. Cudahy's boy, Phil. What are you doing? Oh, nothing much. I'm glad you called, Phil. Well, I tell you, honey, I'm calling off that dance for tonight. I just couldn't make up my mind to go without you. Honest, Phil? That's the lowdown, Beth. I thought of something better than the dance. A pal of mine is going to lend me his car. So if you can get away, we'll go for a nice ride in the country. There's going to be a swell moon tonight. Can you make it? Yes. I guess I might as well. I'll cut the study. Folks are going out anyway. We can get back early, can't we? Take the Harmon family. Living in that colony down by the railroad. Those children are left absolutely to themselves. Moral laxity and the increase of crime can be traced directly to home environment. Reformatories and penal institutions are fed from that source. And it is at that source which we must strike. Hello, Brad. I forgot my keys. Take it easy. Mother has a meeting. What, again? Holy smoke. I have to gumshoe around every time I come into this place. Heck, I'm going up to my room and work on my receiving set. Well, don't hammer on it, whatever you do. Listen, Stoop, you don't use a hammer on those things. You'd bust them. Uh, Rob. Yeah? Do you ever feel lonely here? Lonely? Here? Yes. I do. Well, that's a funny thing to say. Well... You and Mother and Dad are always busy with things that don't concern me. It's like being on the outside, looking in. <laughs> Listen, Brad, you've got groin pains. That's all the matter with you. To stamp out this evil, we must courageously invade such homes and work for the ignorance we find there. It is only by such a crusade that we can keep their children out of the dance halls and off the streets. Ladies... I ask for a resolution. I thought I'd better wait for you up the street. It's all right. The folks have gone. Come on. I don't know. Miles from nowhere. Like it? What is it quiet about? I was just thinking. How does it feel to be a boy, Phil? Feels pretty good right now. Okay. How does it feel to be a girl? I'm not so sure she does. It's all so confused sometimes. What are we arguing about? No, wait. Have you ever been in love, Phil? Sure. What do you think this is? No, really, I mean. Well, I'm kind of stuck on you, Beth. You ought to know that. But how can I know it? Well, from the way I act. Don't I want to be with you all the time? Don't I try to pet you and kiss you when we're alone together? What would you call that? I don't know. 
I always thought love was something that lifted you. As though you were on wings. A beautiful something that made you feel sure of yourself. Sort of glorified inside. Shouldn't it be like that? Sure. I feel glorified, don't you? No. I feel sort of ashamed when you make love to me. And that's just what I can't understand. Why do you suppose that is? Gee, I don't know, Beth. You're a funny kid. I know you've been around and you know things that other girls know. Yes, I suppose I do. But sometimes you talk as though you weren't wise to anything at all. I've never let any boy do or say what you've done. Holy smoke, all I've ever done is to kiss you and pet you. I've never let any other boy go even that far. Well, I... Don't you believe me? Yes, I, I guess I do. Um, um... Well, there are plenty of girls like me. Yeah? Maybe. Of course, I'm young yet. But you're the first one I've ever met. Yourself. Oh, don't do that. I think we'd better start for home now. Okay. Maybe we're better. What time is it? Gosh, it's nearly 12. Goodness. It's all right. There's nobody stirring in the house. Maybe they're not home yet. Good night, Beth. You shouldn't do that, Phil. I can't help it. No, please. Not again. Let me go. I can't find my key. I must have forgotten it. How are you going to get in? I don't know. Look. comes my mother and father. I left my window open. I had to climb to her over the porch. You won't have to climb no porch, honey. I've been waiting up for you all. Sarah, where are you? I can't see you. I was here all right. I was just blending into the background. Here they come. I feel quick. Okay, good How much did you tip him with? Fifteen cents. Why, you're crazy. I never tipped him more than a dime. <sighs> that was wonderful of you, Sarah. We got to my room just in time. Yes, ma'am. It don't do me no good to fly up them stairs like that. Look here, honey. You all shouldn't let no boy kiss you like that boy was doing. I guess I couldn't help myself. You gotta help yourself. I know them long kisses taste powerful sweet, but there's mighty bad medicine just the same. Well, what are you going to do when you like a boy and you don't want to hurt his feelings? Never mind his feelings. You say, look here, mister, you just take yourself right off of my premises. I suppose you're right. Your mind and Pa just went to their room. Now, you'd better get to bed quick. Thank you. Good night. You want some more coffee, Will? No, thanks to you. I've got to hurry. As usual. Do you always have to read at your breakfast? It doesn't show much consideration to your family, and it certainly sets a bad example to the children. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Robert? What are you laughing at? Not a thing. Uh, excuse me, I have a date to meet some fellas. A date before school? Sure, six of us are pitching in to buy a car. A car? What are you going to use for money? Oh, it's just an old heap of junk. You know, transportation, a little fun, maybe. So long, folks. See you later. Look at here, honey. The least you can do is put away a couple of these here. Look how nice they is. Thanks, Sarah. But I'm not hungry this morning. After that good sleep you had last night, you should have an appetite like a bear. Why, when I was a boy, I yes, used to... Well, we've heard all about when you were a boy. You've told us thousands of times. Well... Lots of interesting things happen to me. No, but it ceases to be interesting when your family hears the same stories over and over again. Well, Sarah, you come up with me and get my blue suit. I want you to give it to the cleaners when the man comes today. Yeah, so Mr. Andrews, only to clean a man, he don't come today, not unless we call him up. All right. Call him then. Yeah, sir. We call him. Better not be late for school, dear. There's plenty of time. Mother... Will you listen to me for a minute? Of course, dear. What is it? 
You work so strange lately, I hardly know you. Do I? I didn't think you'd notice a little thing like that. Oh, why shouldn't I notice it? Didn't I bring you into the world? Haven't I always had your best interest at heart? Of course you have, dear. Did something happen to you at school? There's always something happening to a girl at school. Don't you remember your school days? <laughs> Things were mighty different then. I wonder if they were. Tell me, Mother, before you married Dad, did you have many boyfriends? But of course, I... I wasn't exactly unpopular. Were you alone with them much? Sometimes. They made love to you, didn't they? Well, a lot of them wanted to, I suppose. But I wouldn't let them. But among them all, there must have one you liked. Take Dad, for instance. You let him kiss you, didn't you? Naturally, after we were engaged. What are you... What are you getting at? It's so hard to tell you. You don't let me talk to you about love and what it means to a girl. You always avoid the subject. And there are some things I can't ask anyone but you. What things? Well, how a girl should act, what she should do. I told you what not to do. But there's much more to it than that. You could help me if you would. You're my mother. Why can't you talk frankly to me? Because I know what's best for you. Well, why should we be ashamed? I'm not ashamed. It's simply that you're too young to discuss such things. Time enough for that after you're married. Look here, young woman. Has someone been making love to you? And if I told you they had, Mother, would you talk frankly to me then? Of course not. I simply order you to have nothing more to do with it. But you haven't answered my question. No, Mother. No one's been making love to me. Just as I thought. Nothing more than curiosity. Every young girl passes through that period. Now simply banish the thought from your mind and don't let me hear another word about it. Oh, dear, how can you worry me with such trifles when you know I have so many important affairs on my mind? The Paris Educational Club? Yes. This letter tells me that I stand a very good chance of being elected vice president. That among all the women of this city, I am the one most capable of holding that office. Now, aren't you proud of me? Yes, Mother. Congratulations. That's a good girl. Now, off to school with you. You didn't tell her nothing about you being out with that boy last night, did you? I wanted to. She wouldn't let me. I only wish I could. Hello, Rob. You know, Mr. Bryson, I was up half the night with that biology assignment you gave us yesterday. Well, it's interesting stuff, though, isn't I it? I should say so. We have as many gadgets in our stomach as a receiving set. That's just what it is, a receiving set. By the way, how are you coming with yours? Oh, pretty good. You know, I wish you were in charge of radio mechanics as well as biology. Oh. Mr. Lang uses so many technical terms, morning, I can't Mr. keep Lang. up with him. Morning. Hello, Hello, boys. Hello. We're on time this morning, all right. Well, here's all your bright little scholars, and what they don't know about biology would stuff an elephant. I think biology is an absorbing subject, and the further you get into the digestive organs, the more interesting. Say, what do you think this is, a cook's tour? <laughs> Here we go, boy. You just about made it, didn't you, Brad? I ran all the way from the bus. Is that the first bell? Yes. I've got to put my things away. No homework for you last night, eh, Brad? What do you mean? I heard you sneaking in about midnight. Where were you? I went for a ride. Who were you with? Do I ask you questions about your friends? I'm not asking you questions. I just want to know who you were with. To quote my favorite author, Mr. Rob Andrews, it's none of your business. All right, but watch your step, Rat. Come on, there's a gong for the first round. Oh, I didn't sleep much last night. Why not? Thinking about you. As today's assignment, we have the digestive organs or alimentary apparatus, which are for the purpose of receiving the food or aliment. I think we'll begin this period with a little oral quiz. I know that isn't any too popular among you, but nevertheless, I want to find out just how thoroughly you studied this subject. Oh, Rob, what's the further purpose of the alimentary apparatus? Why, uh, uh, to convert that portion of the food which is digestible so that it may be absorbed and applied to the nourishment of the body. Miss Stewart, 
Describe the alimentary canal. The alimentary canal is divided into various compartments into which numerous glands pour their secretions to be used in the digestive process. Mr. Darrow, what is the length of the canal? Also its type. Well, the alimentary canal is a tube 28 feet long, which traverses almost the entire part of the uh, axial part of the human body. Mr. Peterson, describe its divisions, please. It is a series of segments or uh, compartments which communicate with each other from above downwards. Miss Underwood, describe the lining of the canal. The canal is lined by a mucous membrane called the alimentary, propelled along the canal from above downwards. It will be interesting for you all to note that on the surface of this mucous membrane... What do you think of this? The police raided the Paradise Gardens last night. You know, that dance hall down on Warren Street. The paper says there were over 50 high school boys and girls there. I knew they'd have to do something about that place. We've had investigators watching. And we've reported to the police time and again. It's really dangerous in this age to trust any young people out of their homes at night. That reminds me. Beth is planning to go to that bond dance tonight. I think she'd better forget about it. I'll tell her. Well, there's a big difference between a barn dance and the Paradise Gardens. The kid never goes to a place like that. If you'd have a talk with her, sort of put her on her honor. There's nothing to talk about. I simply forbid her to leave the house. Oh, you can't do that, Jane. You promised to let her go. Are you telling me how to raise my daughter? You shouldn't break your word. It sets a bad example. Oh, don't argue with me, Will. You know I've a headache. I'm going to my room. You see that she doesn't leave the house. You should talk about setting an example. Oh, look, Mother. Don't you love the way this new dress hangs? Very sweet, dear. But you'll have to save it for some other time. I don't think you should go to that party tonight. But, Mother, I'm already at... You promised me. I know, but I've reconsidered. Haven't you heard about that raid? All those high school students? What has that got to do with me? I never go to dance halls. Well, I don't want you to go to any student party until this scandal blows over. There's your reputation. And besides... Such intimacy with boys is dangerous for a young girl. But it's the same intimacy I meet with every day. If you won't explain things to me, give me your reasons. It's sufficient reason that I don't want you to go. Now, don't say anything more about it, please. Good night. Andrews residence? Mr. Andrews speaking. Oh, can I speak to Sarah the maid, please? Did I hear that phone ring, Mr. Andrews? Yes. It's for you, Sarah. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. Hello? Sarah, will you call Miss Andrews to the phone? Tell her Mr. Cutter is on the wire. Well, I don't know. I'll see if she's here. Miss Beth? Miss Beth, honey? All right, Sarah, I'm coming. Who is it? He says it's Mr. Cudahy. But listen, you don't want to talk to him no harm. Why not? He's as drunk as a fool. I can smell his breath clear here from where he is now. Don't be silly. All right, it ain't no business of mine. Hello? Everything all set? Okay. I'll be there pronto. Shall I ring the doorbell? No. Er... Uh, Horatius is guarding the bridge. Caesar must attack from the rear. Cassandra will escape from above and await thee up the street. Say, 
What the devil were you talking about? <laughs> oh, my dad, uh, I was just translating from Latin for a friend of mine. Oh. Yes. Gee, I'm glad to see you, Beth. Not the only boyfriend in the world. How about me for a good substitute? Wait a minute, I'm no cripple myself. Now them doing, fellas, though I saw her first. Can you beat that, Miss Stewart? Well, I guess I'll have to dance with you after all. Well, I'm only nerve. <laughs> I'm cutting in. Yeah? Well, maybe we're not ready for it yet. Oh, yes, you are. Say, what do you think you're doing? Scram. See, that guy gives me a pain. Miss me, Beth? You seem to be doing all right with Peggy Stewart. I think you're still crazy about her. How can I be crazy about her when I'm crazy about you? Say, look. Look at that moon. Come on. here, isn't it? Swell. I'd like to sleep out here all night. Did you ever sleep out under the stars? Only when I was a Girl Scout. I used to be afraid something would come and get me in the dark. Nothing could get you if you were with me. You're just like, just like these blossoms. Just as sweet and lovely. You don't mean that, Phil. I do. I do. Mm -hmm.
Your assignment for today was the blood vascular system or the anatomy of the heart. But instead, I'm going to talk to you on a more intimate subject, which also concerns the human body. I have no wish to offend you. I only want to help you. Due to my knowledge of medicine, a number of students come to me with their troubles. I shall never reveal what I've learned in that way, but from what I've learned, I know that the boys and girls of this school are constantly endangering not only their moral, but their physical health. It is the aim of our educators to teach you the care of the human body, to show you its structure and its functions. But it is considered unwise to inform you of other facts which are not only important to your moral character, but which may vitally affect your future happiness. That is left to the discretion of your parents. But how many of you have actually received such information before coming to this school? Not many, I believe. If they'd only be frank with you, they could teach you proper motives and instill character which would resist temptation and prevent the indulgences I have observed. Why should this subject cause embarrassment between mother and daughter or father and son? Why should it be kept such a deadly secret? If you know the full truth of a problem, you are that much more fortified against its dangers. Any sort of ignorance is an evil, and it is my intention to correct that evil with scientific instruction to appeal not only to your common decency, but to your common sense. If I can reach but one of you before it is too late, this effort will not be wasted. The human body is God's most glorious creation. To defile it may mean untold misery, both to yourself and to those who love you. And she'll bust them one, so she will. Just keep on crying if you wants to. Crying is good for you sometimes. Seems like it was all your trouble. There now, sweetheart. There now. There now. Fine dinner tonight, Sarah. Yeah, good dinner. Oh, how was Beth? Oh, she's all right. Just a case of nerve. I recognized the symptoms when Rob told me of her breakdown in school this afternoon. Well, that reminds me. Bob's been telling me about a biology teacher at the school. What's his name? Carl Bryson. He's a swell guy. Seems he has some newfangled scheme about giving his students a series of talks on, what did he call it? Well, you see, Mother, he thinks boys and girls should be given what he calls a course in moral hygiene right in school. Moral hygiene. Oh, scientific facts explaining all the functions of the human body. Whatever are you talking about? You know, I've told you how the kids at school get mixed up in all sorts of trouble with each other. Bryson says that's due to ignorance, a lack of knowledge they should have been given in their own homes. You mean he proposes to teach that sort of thing in our school? Sure, why not? Oh, I never heard of such a thing in my life. Well, it's outrageous. No wonder Beth had a breakdown in her class. She only heard the beginning of it. Well, that was too much for her to hear. The very idea. Moral hygiene. And I'll put a stop to that at once. I'm going to get all the evidence and present it to the school board. You'll have to help me, Rob. I shall demand that they dismiss that man as soon as possible. Now, look here, Jane. This fellow may have a good idea at that. Well, Just because it's never been done before. There's no reason why they should begin it now. Why, she's upset. 
Every tradition of decency. If you think I'm going to help you get him out... You'll do as I say, young man. And if I had my way about it, he'd be up before the board tomorrow. Holy smoke, Dad. Why did you have to tell her? You see how that's upset, Rob? How does that teacher dare mention such a thing in our school? I'm going to telephone to the members of my club immediately. What do you think? That about Bryson's speech and she's going to try and get him kicked out of his job. Wants me to help her do it. And you tie that. Tried to reason with her, but she won't listen to me. She never listens to anyone. If she comes to you with this, say you didn't hear a word of it. Of course, Rob. I wouldn't testify against Mr. Bryson. He whiz. Just because he told the truth. Say, who were you throwing it about? Away? I'll tell you when you let me. I've got to tell someone. Why shouldn't I let you? Go ahead. But, Rob, something a girl doesn't usually tell her brother. You're right about Mother. I love her with all my heart. I wouldn't dare go to her with this. I only wish I could. What's on your mind? Spill it. I've been going around a great deal with a boy who I know is the only one I could care a lot for. I'm not going to tell you his name. I want you to know how it started. All I ask is that you let me tell it in my own way. All right, all right. Am I complaining? Yes, I did. The biology teacher of all people in the world. Okay, what good does it do a mother to try to keep such knowledge from her children if they're going to hear it at school? Didn't your Lucy tell you? She didn't. That sounds very odd to me. Now, listen. I called a select group of parents that were going to meet here at my house tomorrow morning at 10. We'd take action at once. If only mother were different. Oh, I know. we got to keep it from her. Dad couldn't stand up under a thing like that either. <laughs> Rob, I'm so terribly afraid. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, it's all right. I won't let anyone hurt you. Well, look here, sis. Didn't I always lick the kids that picked on you when you were little? Don't feel bad. Don't, don't feel bad. Rob, don't leave me now. I gotta be alone to think it over, see? Just you wait. We'll get out of it. Sure we will. I didn't disturb you, Mr. Bryson. Not at all. What's on your mind? I'm afraid I got you into trouble, sir. How do you mean? I told my mother and father about your talk in school. Honest, I was just praising you, but, but my mother took it up with the school board and asked for your dismissal. I can't tell you how rotten I feel about it. Well, that's all right, Rob. I expected something like that to happen. Your mother or some other boy's mother. At any rate, we may start them thinking. I thought it was a great idea myself. I only wish you'd started before you did. So do I. Is that all you came to see me about? What's the matter, son? What? Oh, oh nothing. I, I'm all right. I'm fine. No, you're not. I can see you're worried. Something I can do? I'm afraid not. Doesn't seem to be much anybody can do. Got yourself in a jam? It isn't me. It's... Oh, I can't tell you. Of course you can. Anything you say to me will be considered quite sacred. Believe that. Nobody must know about this. Especially now my folks. It's my sister. You know what a good kid she is, Mr. Bryson. My mind is made up. I'm going to make her tell me the fellow's name. I got a gun home. I'll fix him. I wouldn't do anything quite that stupid if I were you. Your sister's suffering enough as it is. Do you want to make it worse for her by telling the whole world about it? Does she love this boy? She thinks she does. Why kill him? Perhaps he loves her, too. Or why think of killing that which is the result of their love? Perhaps we can find a way, Rob. Do you, do you mean you'd help us? Why not? Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Ridgway. Oh. Yes, sir. Well... 
There it is. I'm ordered to appear before the school board tomorrow at 10. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Don't worry about me, Rob. We've got to think of your sister. Poor kid. We've got to get her out of this. Mr. Bryson, you have heard the affidavit sworn to by Mrs. Andrews and other parents. To produce witnesses, students of your own class. Have you anything to say before these witnesses are called? It, uh... It won't be necessary for Mrs. Andrews to call her witnesses. Although the lady has emphasized her statements with some exaggeration, the substance of her accusation is based on facts. I also have witnesses, but I can't call them here before you. Boys and girls whose young lives have been ruined because of parents who had not the courage to tell them the truth about themselves. Mr. Bryson seems to forget that it is he who is on trial, not the parents of this community. In the building of a future generation, we are all on trial. And we shall be judged by posterity. My action was no criticism of the conduct of our schools. Their teaching and discipline are of the best. But outside the school, the boys and girls are subject to influences over which their educators have no control. Throw me out if you must. But don't let that blind you to this existing evil. If you won't speak freely to your children in your homes, you should at least give them protective knowledge in the schools. Our boys and girls are a brave new world, unafraid of life. Borrow from their courage and help them. We certainly were proud of you, my son. You got your words out fine. I was a valedictor, or what you might call it, of my class when I graduated. And I'll never forget what the principal said to me. He took me by my hand. Yes, Will, we've heard that dozens of times. Come along. I want to see the principal before he gets away. She's going to tell him how to run the school next year. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bryson. It was swell of you to come to the graduating exercises after what they did to you. Well, I couldn't miss that speech of yours. Congratulations. Say, uh, I want to talk to you two. Let's go where we can be alone. Sure. Come along, Beth. I guess this seems pretty familiar to you, doesn't it? Yes. I've taught many a class in here, made many fine friendships. It was here I met you and your brother. I hope you won't regret it, Mr. Bryson. Not ever. And I don't want you to feel ill at ease in my presence, either. I can't help it. Well, you must help it. Don't you know I'm your friend? Of course he is, sis. Did you tell your mother and father about going away with Beth? Yes. I put it this way. I told them I could get a job in Pleasantville, driving a station car from one of the summer hotels. You see, I explained that in that way I could make enough money for both of us, and Beth could have a nice long vacation in the mountains. I think they're going to fall for it. I suggested Pleasantville because I have a doctor friend who's the head of a hospital there. When the time comes, you can enter under an assumed name, and he'll take excellent care of you. Of course, we won't have enough money for the hospital bills. The doctor will wait for the money. I'll see to that. You can stay with the doctor's wife until it's time for you to enter the hospital. I'll have to leave here before my mother sure, finds Sure, we'll out. fix that. I'm leaving tonight myself, so I've got to be moving along. I've got to pack. I'm going down the station with Mr. Bryson, sis. You wait here for mother and dad. Give up your courage. I'll be seeing you soon. Thank you, Mr. Bryson. Come on, Rob. Hi there, stranger. Wait a minute, will you? Say, what's the idea of giving me the go-by lately? It's okay if you don't want to go out with me. Well, you might give a fellow a chance to talk to you once in a while. Who's cutting under me, anyway? There's no one, Phil. I haven't been going out lately. Well, wait a minute. Now that school's over, we can take some little trips. No more trips, Phil. I'm going away. Where? Oh, just away. Well, give me the address so I can write to you. Is anything wrong? No, Phil. You act as though you didn't even want to talk to me. What's the matter with you? My mother and father are here, and I don't want them to think that you... Are what? I can't tell you. Goodbye, Phil. Well, gee, I'm glad you got here, Mr. Bryson. I've been worried sick. I came as soon as I got your message. What's the trouble, Rob? They phoned me at the hotel late last night and said I should come to the hospital as quick as I could. Beth was suddenly taken ill and they brought her here and here ever since. Dr. Browning will see you now. Oh, thanks. Come in. Hello, Bryson. Hiya, Doctor. 
Your sister's a pretty sick girl, son. And I advise you notify her parents at once. Is it as bad as that? Yes. How soon can they get here? What? Well, I don't know. Well, if you telephone them by long distance, they can reach here late this afternoon. You'll do everything you can, won't Naturally. you, Doctor? I must go to her now. Call your father and mother. Well, how am I going to tell them, Mr. Bryson? What can I say? I wouldn't explain anything until they get here. We'll talk to them together, if you like. No, I'd better see them alone. We can't lose her now. It's too terrible to think about. Don't think about it. There's a telephone booth in the waiting room. Come on. I have some good news for you, Beth. Your mother and your father are coming here to see you this afternoon. You can wait for the doctor right in here. Well, well... Sit down, Mother. Where does she take me to it at once? You can't see her now. I've got to talk to you first. But what happened? That's what I want to know. Why am I being kept in the dark? Hold your horses, Jane. Beth came to me and, and she told me she was in trouble and I... Oh. What do you mean? Are you trying to tell me that my daughter... My little girl that I raised so carefully... Guarded from every contact with worldly knowledge. Oh, I can't believe Oh, her. why didn't she tell us? If I should think her first thought would have been to confide in her mother. It was, but she didn't dare to. But you must have known who was responsible. What kind of a brother are you? At least you could have done something about that. Who is he anyway? Well, I don't know. Beth wouldn't tell me. Oh, what's the good of talking about what we should or shouldn't have done? Do you think I'd be telling you this if Beth weren't in danger? In danger? Yes. The doctor says she's in a desperate condition. Can't you see what I'm trying to tell you? We might lose her. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I never thought of that. Oh, my poor little girl. Oh, my poor little girl. <laughs> Beth must be saved at any cost. Can't I see her before you... I don't think it would be wise, Mrs. Andrews. Due to her condition, it isn't advisable to use the complete anesthetic, and she's going to have a difficult time. But please rest assured, we're going to do everything we can to pull her through. Did you sleep at all last night? I hardly remember. Well, naturally, they gave her a sedative. Of course, I haven't slept a wink since we came here. I'm afraid I'll have to chase you all out of here. I want to speak to my daughter alone. Well, there's a waiting room down at the end of the hall. I'll call you. Come on, Jane. It's all right, Brad. Why did you have to start picking on her right away? Gee whiz, we've got to be kind to her, Mother. Forget what happened, can't you? And that will take time. I must adjust myself to the situation in my own way. And I won't be dictated to. No one's trying to dictate to you, Jane. We're just thinking of Beth, Mother. Of course you are. And it's time someone thought about me. Oh, I... What? I'm sorry, Rob. I, I was told to wait here until I could see your sister. Oh, please, Mr. Bryson. What are you doing here? Why do you want to see her? How did he know she was here, Rob? He knows all about it. What's that? What do you mean? It was he who helped us. We had to go to someone. So you went to him instead of coming to us. Well, perhaps you can tell us who was responsible for her condition. No, I wouldn't if I could. What good would it do? Well, he could be forced to marry her. At least that would wipe out the disgrace. What disgrace? How can you ask me that? A thing like this is bound to leak out. And your only worry is what will people say? Aren't you at all concerned as to how this thing might have been prevented? Who was responsible for it? The responsibility lies with Beth. And that good-for-nothing boy she gave herself to. Oh, I think you can go farther back than that. Oh, I know. This is another age. Boys and girls have changed. They're, they're bold and forward. Tasting every forbidden pleasure. If she'd only listen to my teachings. What teachings? To be a good girl? Most girls want to be good, but they must be told more than that. The children of today have not changed. They're just as you were, wanting the same things, running the same risks. It's conditions that have changed. And the trouble is that your children know no more about life now than you did then. It's that that should be changed. But in this case, you neglected your opportunity. What has happened to Beth has happened to thousands of girls. Not because they didn't know anything about life, but because they didn't know enough. 
Are you laying the blame on me? Yes. On you and on every parent who has neglected that sacred duty. You and every mother and father in the world should understand that the only way to keep your children straight is to tell them everything your own experience has taught you. They haven't changed. They are not bad. They are just human like yourselves. This girl is beginning her life all over again. She needs your help and understanding. It will come a little late. But it's better late than never. Do you think it was right, Will? Do you suppose it was my fault? We've both been to blame, dear. We've been blind. I've got to make up for it some way. What can I do? I'll tell you what you can do. You can get that organization of yours together, whip the Board of Education into line, and make them put that Bryson fellow back on the job again. I'll do it. I'll do it. But I'll do more than that. I'll start a campaign among the parents. I'll open their eyes as our eyes have been opened. Oh, Will, I, I've been an awful fool. I've been a fool. You can only stay a minute. Okay. Hello, Beth. Phil, how did you know? Your mother told a friend of mine that she was leaving for Pleasantville because you were sick up here in the hospital. I got in this morning and met Mr. Bryson downstairs in the waiting room. He explained everything. You mean Mr. Bryson told you? Yeah. Gee, oh, I missed you like the deuce while you were away. Listen, Beth, have I ever told you that I love you? Yes, but you never meant it. I never really knew it until you went away. Of course, we're young to get married, and I suppose your mother wouldn't like it. But when you get out of here, let's put one over on. Will you? Will you, Beth? Listen, honey, I'm going to stay in Pleasantville until you're well. I'm coming to see you every morning, and I'm going to love you always. Always? Yes, dear. I can't tell you how glad I am to be back with you again, or how much I appreciate your welcome. As to what I tried to teach you, my only suggestion now is that you settle all your problems by a frank appeal to your parents. If you will give them your confidence, you're bound to win theirs. Now, as for today's assignment, let us take the human brain, which is possibly the root of all evil. Oh. 